And Speedway police are asking for help identifying two suspects wanted for robbery. The robbery was reported early Monday morning at the Speedway gas station on West 16th Street. One of the suspects is described as being between 20 and 25 years old with a goatee and curly hair. Fire investigators looking for your help identifying a suspected arsonist. The man is seen on video walking around a yard, briefly walks out of camera, then you can see him running away nude. Seconds later, smoke is seen coming from the house on East 13th Street near Emerson Avenue on the city's east side. Damage estimated to be around $25,000. Yeah. If you know anything about these cases, call Crime Stoppers at 317 262 TIPS. You can also download the free P3 Tips app or visit crimetips.org. If your tip leads to an arrest, you could earn a cash reward. While this month marked 20 years since someone attempted to bomb the Tippecanoe County Courthouse, the person responsible never caught. As Kayla Sullivan reports, some still hold on to hope they will get answers to the case, while others have forgotten it even happened. A red Ford pickup truck with an improvised bomb and two 55 gallon drums of gas in the back. Whoever drove into those doors wanted to blow up the courthouse. We were really fortunate because what we ended up with was a building that was just closed for a handful of days because of smoke damage uh, as opposed to something that had burned to the ground or, or exploded. How are you? Tippecanoe County Commissioner Tracy Brown was working in the Tippecanoe County Jail that night. Years later, he became one of the sheriffs determined to crack the case. From a personal perspective, I would still like to see this, this solved, but I am resolved that, that it may be more difficult now than it was back in 2008 when we stood before our citizens and said we believe this can still be solved. At this point, most of the original investigators have retired, and many people in the community don't even know or remember it happened. I would have been eight years old. Brian Wiggs is the general manager of Digby's Pub and Patio right across the street from the courthouse. He had no idea someone tried to bomb it 20 years ago. It's a little crazy. I don't understand why anybody would want to do that. And apparently they haven't caught the guy, so. That makes Wiggs a little nervous. He can't help but think what people would do if the same thing happened today. People would probably be scared to come downtown for at least a pretty substantial amount of time, so it'd be a pretty big pretty big hurt for us. But for 20 years, Tippecanoe County has worked to secure the courthouse. There is now only one public entrance. Employees must enter with a key card and visitors have to go through a metal detector. One of the first safety measures went up just months after the attempted bombing. These are fixed ballards uh, and they were installed with the intent to be able to stop a vehicle from, from getting uh, any closer to the building than basically the sidewalk around the building. Tippecanoe County Courthouse Security Supervisor Scott Hodson says there's more keeping the courthouse safe than what meets the eye, and a lot of it happened after August 2nd, 1998. Things have come so far since then, and then obviously with uh, September 11th, 2001, uh, we, we got some other measures after that, and uh, I, I feel very confident in what we're doing down here. I was Kayla Sullivan reporting. Commissioners still have an account with nearly $9,000 for a reward in this case, but Brown says a person could see upwards of $50,000 if their tip leads to an arrest. As Central Indiana continues to battle the opioid crisis, a local fire department says it is trying to be part of the solution. Fisher's first responders have started substituting opioid fentanyl with the non addictive laughing gas in their ambulances. News 8's Brenna Donnelly has more on the reason for the change. Once we turn the gas on, we have a 50 50 mixture of oxygen and nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide, AKA laughing gas, now in the arsenal of Fisher's Fire and Rescue. That keeps us away from having to use the opioids as a first step. They're not doing away with opioids like fentanyl. Patients with head injuries and serious trauma will get a dose of this. But the average sprain, they'll get the mask. First day that uh, this went into service, uh, we had an injury uh, on a trampoline, and uh, they were able to actually give this as pain management. We're going to give you the least amount of pain medicine that you need. Um, if we need to go up, we can go up. Now, the only thing we can't do is we can't start out up here and then come back down. It's how they're battling the opioid epidemic in their own backyard. We're going to do our very best to make sure that we're we're part of the solution and not a part of the cause. Where this might have been that first touch you have with opioids, now it's not going to exist. 
But we wanted a second opinion, so we visited Dr. Ed Bartkus, emergency medical director at IU Health Methodist. Um, I'm pleased to see that they're going to start doing this, so it's going to work well, I suspect. Dr. Bark has pointed out maintaining laughing gas can get expensive and potentially dangerous if inappropriately used, but notes it's a tried and true pain reliever. This is not new. Uh, one of the seminal articles was in 1979. We used it a lot in the 1980s, and then it fell out of favor when fentanyl uh, became more available because fentanyl doesn't cause a drop in blood pressure, uh, so it's a, a much easier drug for us to use. But we'd like to switch that now and so this makes sense. Again that was Brenna Donnelly reporting. Firefighters said they gave opioid pain relief in more than 350 cases last year. They hope to reduce that number by two-thirds. Time now to revisit this week's Monday's most wanted suspects. Police continue to look for Gavin Bates. He's wanted on a charge of battery resulting in injury to a pregnant woman. Police are also looking for Jimmy Cushenberry. He's wanted for violation of probation on an original charge of criminal recklessness. If you recognize any of these suspects or have any information that could help detectives, call Crime Stoppers 317-262-TIPS. You can also download the free P3 Tips app or visit crimetips.org. If your tip leads to an arrest, you could earn a cash reward. That's all the time we have for this month's show. We hope you can join us again September 20th for another edition of Indiana's Most Wanted. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you back here tonight at 10 and 11 and online at wishtv.com. Have a good night.